This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tecum's M3 Grant, Trumpeter's F106, a paint rack and painting stand, and Academy's K2 Black Panther. This episode of New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, the source for all your workbench storage needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly look at the latest modeling releases. I'm Aaron Skinner. We blow the lid off model kits to give you a look at parts, decals, and details. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And the first kit in our sights this time is Tacom's 135th scale M3 Grant. Tacom released this kit in concert with the other M3, the Lee. The primary difference between the two is the turret. Many of these medium tanks were exported to Britain and the Soviet Union. The M3's bolted hull is reproduced here in multiple parts, starting with the lower hull, which includes full sponsons and recessed panel lines. Suspension has been a problem in past M3 kits. Tacom reproduces it with multi-part bogies that should be movable with careful gluing. The road wheels have open lightning holes, and the idlers have separate outer rims and hubs. The instructions indicate shaving bolts from the part trees to detail the arms. Lincoln length tracks provide traction, and Tacom supplies a jig to form the upper run with the proper drop from the drive sprocket to the first return roller. The rest of the hull comprises side panels with separate doors. They have detailed interfaces, but there's no interior for the fighting compartment. The rear panel and engine deck sides show nicely molded bolts and rivets. The exhaust pipes and mufflers are individual pieces. The upper hull includes several panels, including at least one molded flat that needs to be bent to shape. Small parts such as the raised joints between hull panels, tools, and engine compartment doors detail the hull. The sponson mounted main gun comprises a one-piece barrel with separate muzzle. Fender skirts, toolboxes, and brackets separate the grant from the lee. The upper part of the turret is molded as a single part with weld seams and separate hatch. The turret's 37mm gun and coaxial machine gun are single parts. A small photo etched fret provides an engine intake screen, bolts, and headlight guards. Clear lenses are supplied for the headlights. Decals provide markings for three British grants in North Africa in 1942 and one Australian example. I think we all know which one I'll be building. Yeah, that was pretty predictable. <laughs> Looks like a reasonably straightforward build. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. FSM author Chris Morosco recommends breaking from the instructions and building the entire upper hull by itself to ensure proper alignment. Next, let's look at Trumpeter's 172nd scale F-106A. Developed from the F-102, the Delta Dart entered U.S. Air Force service as an interceptor in 1959. The last one left Air National Guard units in the 1980s. Trumpeter's Dart features a multi-part ejection seat with shoulder harnesses but no lap belts. Two parts make up the unique two-handed control stick. The side consoles show molded switches and lights that can be enhanced with decals, as does the panel. The cockpit sits atop the multi-part nose gear bay with molded structural details and plumbing. Fuselage halves with fine recessed panel lines trap the cockpit and gear bay, as well as a long jet pipe consisting of internal and external parts, and the weapon bay. Four Falcon AIM-4 missiles, two each heat-seeking and radar-guided, and an AIR-2 Genie air-to-air -air nuclear missile are given to fill the bay. The Falcons can be posed on extended racks for launch. Check your references for the proper loadout. Two underwing tanks are also provided. Optional parts allow the bay to be posed open or closed with great simplicity. The intakes are blanked off and might be a tad shallow, but it's difficult to see down the narrow openings, so it's probably not a deal breaker for most modelers. The delta wing comprises a single lower section incorporating part of the belly with the main gear bay and upper wing halves. None of the control surfaces are separate, and oddly, the recessed outline of the elevons doesn't extend to the trailing edge, and there's no line separating the inboard and outboard section. Simple scribing should fix the omission. The gear legs and doors reflect the detail molded in the bays. In addition to the windscreen and canopy, clear plastic provides position and landing lights. Decals supply markings for three Delta Darts, one with the 460th Fighter Interceptor Squadron, one from the 171st Fighter Interceptor Squadron of the Michigan Air National Guard, and one from the Air Defense Weapons Center. So it looks pretty good in the box, and it'll likely be a straightforward build. But there are a couple of odd callouts in the instructions. Including painting the inside of the speed brake under the rudder, even though it is molded closed. Although it started as a source for modular workbench storage units, HobbyZone continues to expand its range with helpful tools. Among the items sent to FSM recently are this painting stand and large paint rack. Let's start with a painting stand, which I've used quite a bit recently to paint some figures. It's essentially two halves held together with a screw clamp. It can be tightened to secure a part or figure. Real leather covers a large ergonomic grip and provides a steady handhold during painting. All of that is pretty cool, but perhaps the neatest feature is the stand itself. 
The two slots are different widths. One side holds the grip securely and vertically, great for long-term drying. The other is looser and holds the grip at a slight angle. This one is great for holding the grip between color changes or brush cleanings. The other is a long paint rack. This one is designed to hold Tamiya 23 milliliter bottles. Unlike some of Hobby Zone's other storage items, this rack can be assembled without glue. But be careful, as the parts can be broken, as Aaron discovered while building this one. Yeah, not sure how I did that. Clearly I put a little too much English on it. <laughs> but this rack and other Hobby Zone racks and modules are an easy way to keep your workbench neat. Finally, we have Academy's 135th scale K2 Black Panther. This is the latest generation of South Korea's main battle tank. It looks a little like a cousin of the Abrams. The K2 entered service in 2014 and is designed to complement the K1 and K1A1 tanks already in ROK service. It features a 120 millimeter smooth bore main gun and explosive reactive armor. The lower hull builds from a belly and side panels with molded anchors for the suspension. The rear panel has molded vents with an optional cover. Slots around the mounts for the dry sprockets indicate this kit may be available with a motor. But fear not, Academy provides inserts for the slots. The drive sprockets, idlers, and road wheels show rib and bolt detail. All but the sprockets trap poly caps that slip over the suspension arms. Working individual link tracks finish the running gear. They are joined by separate end connectors and guide teeth. Each track pad is also separate. The upper hull is a single piece with fine recessed and raised details and beautifully molded non-skid patches. Hull features include a separate driver's hatch, engine covers, lights, brush guards, and fender skirts. No clear parts are given for the lights or vision blocks, but the kit includes a self-adhesive sheet of color-changing material for the treated glass. The turret is more complex than the hull. The upper half has open hatches and molded attachments. The lower includes the bottom of the stowage boxes as well as the bustle basket. The remainder of the racks and boxes, as well as the smoke dischargers, dress up the turret. The kit provides the option to add explosive reactive armor, and the mounts are here too. Those ERA blocks go on the sides of the turret and fender skirts, and on top of the turret. The main gun is a single tube with separate muzzle and fume extractor sections that extend to the mantlet. Part of the breech is included as interior detail. Photo etch screens detail the bottom of the bustle rack. Decals and color diagrams show markings for two K2s, one with ERA, the other without. But the sheet also has a matrix of numbers in black and white, optional unit insignia, ID stripes, and flags as seen on Korean tanks on exercise. Academy does a nice job on Korean subjects, and this kit looks to be no exception. Yeah, look for a detailed review of it, along with full builds of the F-106 and M3 Lee, stable made of the grant seen in this episode, in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the November issue, on sale now. And don't forget to go to the Combat Hobby Store to pick up your essential tools, like this Excel knife set. And pick up a box of 100 number 11 blades while you're there. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Elizabeth Nash. Happy Halloween. Boo! The road wheels have open lightning holes. Lightning. 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 Not the savvy stuff that brings all of us to life. One. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know who the hell wrote this. He was drinking a lot of those. Been dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be a professional. <laughs> Why start now? That's not whiskey. <laughs> Just didn't believe in myself. <laughs> Apparently, I made a grave mistake giving her this thing.